sung probably every day of my life. The timing and the tuning is the last thing I think about. People will believe emotions before timing and tuning. It always sounds a little bit like, you know, magic, this, this connection between the lyric and the way you perform it, but I really do think it makes a difference. As the vocalist, you're the one telling the story. It's your job to get in that headspace, and it's a really important headspace to find. You can't rely on any kind of technology to do that. There is none, nothing exists. You need to get that performance out and it doesn't matter how you get there, that's what you need to find. That's, that's the goal, to get your head in that space. When I started recording, I was on a four track recorder in my bedroom back in Frodsham. The thought of coming somewhere like this, it just didn't feel reachable, that goal. It felt like there was another world that went on that I was never going to be a part of. You know, this is a, a, a £6,000 mic right here, and I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have sung lead vocals on my £50 SM58, and it's made it onto the record. I mean, let me go, uh, love, love. I mean, I, I, could, I could actually go on all day. Throwing money at music doesn't make it better. It's all about your ears. Train your ears, listen to music, listen to things. Make, make your own music as often as you can, write as often as you can, sing as often as you can, play as often as you can. The more you're involved in music, the better you will get. I work really hard at what I do, and anybody who's trying to enter this industry feeling like, you know, oh, this is dead easy and you, you get all this and you get paid this, and forget it, because that stuff, that isn't even in your head when you're coming into music. You want to make music, you want to play music, you want to play live, you want to play with other people in bands, and that's what your mind's thinking, and that's what I'm thinking of every day and night. You know, I go to crazy trade shows and I read stupid magazines and I'm obsessed with finding old, ancient, vintage things on eBay and I'm completely consumed by the whole thing. And that's brilliant. You know, if you're the same, celebrate it. You know, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what I've done and the methods I've used every day to do what I do and get from A to B. It's the one thing I realised actually when I had my 10 year sabbatical, which everybody who knows me knows about. You know, I, I was stood on stage one night and it was, a, it was actually a bit of a shock to me, even though I'd sung for many years. I was stood on stage one night and I thought, wow, I love singing. I really love it. And it was almost like a bit of a shock to myself. I've forgotten how much of an enjoyable experience it is to sing, to actually stand there with your own voice and talk and sing to people, it's, it's amazing. Don't ever underestimate music, it can change your life, it can change people's lives, it can make people take a left turn in instead of a right turn and it's an incredible powerful tool and it's to be respected and, um, and taken care of and loved and enjoyed. It's a brilliant thing and it's been really good to me over the years and I try to be really good to it in return. I just jump out of bed every day excited to find what music's gonna give me that day. It's beautiful and I love it. If you can use anything that I've said in this series of films to your advantage, um, then uh, I, I know it's been a success and I've really enjoyed opening my heart to this. And who knows, you know, one of you watching out there might get to be in this beautiful seat I'm sat in today in Abbey Road, recording their music for millions of people around the world to enjoy. So good luck and uh, thanks for being a part of this journey. <laughs>